I was really on some hungry, thirsty type. Like I was just like, I'm gonna go savage. And uh, cause I, I had a, a album before this one and it was like straight hard nosed rap. And I was like, it's tight, but it's not really about anything. You know, like it's just me rapping, trying to be like, I'm the best rapper or whatever, but like, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just get more personal. And I, and I was, I was like four or five songs in, and I, and I scrapped it. I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna go that route. And after I scrapped that, it was when all those things start happening. And then like I was out the studio for a bit, and I remember I was just thinking like, what do I want to be? And I realized I was like, I just want to use music as therapy. Like you know, what I'm saying I want to want this to be therapeutic. I just want to talk about myself. And more than flex rap, more than more than like you know, bravado and all that. I want it to be myself. The things that people relate to and the things that make people superhuman is the fact that they can relate to so many people and be human on so many levels. Like, we love Kendrick Lamar so much because we can relate to his struggle. We love Kid Cudi because he helps people get through hard times. So, like, we love people for that. So I was like, you know what? I want to be myself and tell my personal struggle and show what made me even get into this in the first place. I knew that I was gonna get Mac Miller. I knew that I would get T on there because they're like my closest friends. They're like my management mates. So I knew they would be there. But other than that, Innocent Pack, I, that happened organically when I heard the, the Compton album. I had hit him up. I hit him up on Twitter because of that. He was following me on Twitter. I'm like, come through. He came through. We made this song. Like the, the amount of insanity in that simplicity is crazy. <laughs> That was the first record. I actually don't have another song with Anderson Pack recorded. That was the only one we ever made. I've been knowing Wiz for so long, and Ju Juicy as well. I've been knowing Wiz since like 2010. So, like, he, we were really cool. And I remember hitting him up like, "Yo, we gonna use this song for the album?" Because I, I knew, like, I recorded it, and I was like, "I'm, whether or not, whatever happens, whatever I'm doing, I'm saving this song for the album." You know, <laughs> like so. But I was like, "Yo, we gonna use that song for the album?" He was like. Send it to me, I forgot what it sounded like, and then, and then he uh, hit me back. He was like, oh yeah, put that on there. <laughs> That's my boy, though. I love Wiz, man. He's a great, he's a great person. He's the type of person to ask you like constantly, like, are you good? You need something? Like, you know what I'm saying? He's definitely good at heart, like he's a great person. And then uh, in terms of everybody else, like there's a live band playing throughout, and they we put that together during the um the process of this album. This it's a group that never played together before. It's like a, different players from different bands all came together to make one band. We call it Steely Wonderbread. <laughs> and um, it's dope because like they never played together, but they're so it sounds so ill. It sounds like effortless, and like now that we brought them together, they're all friends and everything. And it's just so many different things that happen in the mix of this album, not just the music itself, but just friendships and levels of different people meeting each other. And it was just amazing to see come from one project, you know.